In this video, we're gonna give you a comparison between two different entry-level Fleetwood Class A models. So the Fleetwood Flare and the Fleetwood Fortis. So we're gonna start with the Fleetwood Flare and then we're gonna kind of compare these two for you because these are both really cool entry-level Class A gas engine models from Fleetwood. And they have got a lot to offer from that entry-level viewpoint. So let's take a look at these and we're gonna kind of highlight some of the differences so that as you're thinking about what you might be wanting as you get out there on the road, it gives you some food for thought and you can decide maybe which one would be best for you and your particular travel style. We are Charity, Ben, Dakota, and Trinity. We decided we didn't want to wait for a life of adventure. So in 2017, we bought our first RV and set off to live a life of travel in the USA. We've visited over 38 states in three years and have many more to go. Follow along to learn all the best places to see, RV and travel tips, and much more. So I am here at the Tampa RV Super Show with Mike, who is one of the factory trainers for Fleetwood. So this is a cool opportunity for us to learn a little bit about the Fleetwood product. But today in this video, we're gonna focus on two of the Class A models, the Fortis and the Flare. And we're gonna talk a little bit about the differences between them. So as you're thinking about jumping into RV life, you're considering a Class A, talk a little bit about maybe what might be the best fit for you as you're thinking about jumping in. So the Fortis and the Flare. And the Flare. So one of the things that I noticed was that you've got a little bit of different length options on that. So Correct. tell us a little bit more about what those length options are between the Flare and then the Fortis. So the Flare is gonna be the first step into the Class A and the lengths on that one are gonna be, the shortest is 28A and then we have a 29M, 32S, 34J and a 35R. So you can go anywhere from 28 to 35. And then on the Fortis, you can go down to a 32. We do have a 32 RW, um, and then we jump up from there up to that 35, 36 foot area. So one of the things I noticed, you've got the same engine. It looks like the Ford V8 7.3 yep. in both. But I did notice on the flare that the tires look like they're a little bit smaller Small, right. versus the Fortis. So what's the difference in like just the chassis setup? So our flares are all going to have 19 and a half inch wheels. They're going to be a steel okay. wheel and then they have a simulator on top of them. And our Fortis are all going to have 22 inch aluminum wheels on them. Okay. Chassis wise with the 28A, we start in at that about 16,000 pound chassis. And then if we go up to, um, Farther now we go up to a 22,000 pound chassis, 29 A's on a, um, or I'm sorry, 29 M's on an 18,000 pound. And then all of our Fortises are on a 22,000 pound chassis. And if you go with like the Fortis DB, we can go up to a 26,000 pound chassis. Okay. So a little heavier. And as a rule of thumb, you're gonna get a little bigger chassis with the Fortis. So with that little bit bigger chassis, how does that then compare with like cargo capacity for like on the flare versus the Fortis? Mm -hmm. Are you gonna be able to load up the Fortis a little bit heavier with extra stuff versus the flare? Yes, typically. So a little difference there. Um, so your cargo carry capacity is affected by the overall dry weight of your vehicle too. Okay. So we go up higher in chassis, um, heavier chassis, but we're also going up with higher amenities, heavier amenities as well. So as a rule of thumb, I would say yes. Um, that is the case. They both have the same engine, but you will typically get more cargo carrying capacity in a Fortis. Okay, that's definitely good to know. And I think one thing that I just want to point out too for those of you watching, and you think about the, the same engine, but one's heavier than another, at some point you have a law of diminishing returns with fuel economy. So just because one's lighter than another doesn't mean that one's going to get better fuel economy than another. You don't buy an RV for fuel economy. <laughs> so let's start with this flare right over here. So this is a 28 foot model. And one of the things that we hear from new RVers all of the time is they're nervous about the class A size and driving a class A. Now we will tell you after four years of RVing, 
length really doesn't matter so much. You're gonna drive a 28 foot the same way you drive a 43 foot. But for those of you that are concerned about length, that are concerned about getting into those national park campgrounds that occasionally have length limits, this one is a 28 foot. So this is one that you would be able to fit most anywhere that you would want to go camping. One of the things that is pretty cool about the flare model that you can get that you don't really see in a class A is this outdoor kitchen. So if you're one of those people where you enjoy that outdoor kitchen option, you've got your microwave, your mini fridge, your sink, it's definitely a lot of fun to have those options when you just enjoy being outside more than you really wanna be in the RV. So you've got definitely some storage options on the outside as well. So you've got this storage compartment here. You've got some small storage here. I always like to think about using these types of smaller compartments for things like extra tools that you want to carry with you, things that are smaller, but you don't want to have it inside of your rig per se. So you've got another storage area in there. And then let's see what we've got going on here. Oh, just your propane. Let's take a look inside. This is a very spacious model for being a 28 foot. You've got a very nice, well thought out kitchen set up here with plenty of counter space. You've got your three burner propane stove, and then this actually has an actual oven in it for cooking as well. And then you have just your standard microwave that is up here. Nice cabinetry that is in here, plenty of storage. So you have a convertible dinette that you can convert into sleeping space. So you could conceivably sleep one to two people here. And then you have the drop down bunk that is up here, which you can sleep another one to two people here. So you can easily sleep six people in this 28 foot class A motorhome, which that's a lot of people for a 28 footer. But if you've got family, kiddos, plenty of sleeping space for everyone. You've got your theater style seating that is right here, TV that is right here as well. So the great thing is, is if you are a family and it's one of those days where you wanna just be in the RV, you can seat a couple of people here. You can flip this seat around to be able to see the TV from there. And you could always put a couple of kiddos in the dinette area to watch the TV as well. So plenty of just kind of living space for those times where it is a rainy day and you just can't be out and about. You've got that space to be able to enjoy being inside of the RV without feeling too cramped. So up here in the passenger side area, you do have a little workspace that's up here on the Flare RV. This pulls out, you've got some extra drawers that are down here to be able to just put pens, pencils, whatever that you want to be able to put into there. Now let's talk a little bit about the engine setup. It's the exact same engine that is in both of these. You have the Ford V8. Now, when we get up to the Fortis, it is a little bit heavier chassis, and we're gonna show you why once we get up there, but just know that it's the exact same engine setup on both of these particular rigs. So one difference that we wanted to point out is that while both of these particular models have your backup camera system and your side camera systems, the systems mounted on the outside are not quite integrated the same. So here on the flares, those cameras are not part of the mirrors themselves. They're mounted directly onto the body. When we get up to the Fortis, you're going to see that those side cameras are actually integrated into the mirrors but you do have those cameras on both of these to be able to just help you see and understand what's going on around you as you're going down the road. So for the refrigerator, you have a 12 volt fridge, which means that it's not run off of any sort of propane and it has the battery bank sufficient to make that happen. It also means you get a little bit more interior space inside of the fridge and the freezer. And we're betting that the freezer on this probably actually keeps ice cream frozen, unlike our propane fridge. So that's a nice thing to know. Plenty of food pantry space. 
storage right in this particular area here. So speaking of storage, when you come into the kitchen area, there's definitely plenty of room for storage that is up in here. You've got this upper cabinet, but you also have a very nice deep cabinet here under the sink. And then here you also have a nice long drawer that goes under the stove area. So you've got these drawers right here to be able to store stuff as well. And then in this dinette bench, we have got some storage that you can utilize that just passes through under the bench. It's nice to have these shades here to where if you're watching TV and the sunlight's coming in, you wanna block yeah. out the sunlight. But if you want it to be nice and bright and airy, lots of like window space to do that. Cause with this particular slide built the way that it is, if you didn't have those, it would be a really dark area with no natural light, with no windows above the sink or anything. So having those two windows there above this dinette area makes it nice. Especially I keep thinking about when you're in those campgrounds that are just those epic campgrounds, you wanna be able to see what's around you. So it's nice to be able to sit and have a cup of morning coffee in the dinette and see what's out the window. Okay, we're moving back into the bedroom area. We have got nice big wardrobe space in here to be able to hang clothes, whatever that uh, you've got clothing wise that would go into here. And then kind of like a built-in dresser right here. So for a 28 footer, this has a quite a bit of storage space for that shorter length RV. So you've got your bed that's in the back here and this is a king size bed in a 28 foot. It's pretty amazing. And then here you have got your bathroom and your shower. So everything bathroom wise is right here. You can just walk in and uh, got your shower at the very back, sink, toilet, more storage, more storage nice storage options. The other thing I really like is this is a nice lighter color interior. So it doesn't feel super dark or anything like that. It just is nice and modern feeling. You actually have robe hooks up here where most of us RVers end up putting command hooks up everywhere. Well, Fleetwood Forward thought on that and actually installed some of these heavy duty robe hooks there. So hang towels, whatever you need to in the bathroom area right there. I like how light it is in there. Look yes. The skylight and the... You've got the fan vent. light. You've got the skylight light. The other thing that's really nice too is that with those lights, this is behind a separate closed door. So at night, if you're one of those sleepers where you don't want a lot of extra light coming in, that skylight, you don't, you're not worried about trying to cover it up or anything like that because you could just shut the door to the bathroom and then you don't have that light pollution at night if you're one of those sleepers that likes it dark. Let's go check out the Fortis and we're going to talk a little bit about what it looks like to step up to one, a little bit more length, but also two, a few more options. So let's go look at that now that we've taken a look at this. One last thing that I should probably talk about is of course, you're looking at two different models. This is at a lower price point than the Fortis. So the Flare is definitely your entry level class A. The Fortis is also an entry level class A, but it does have a little bit of a higher price point than the Flare. We wanted to say a quick thank you to Fleetwood for sponsoring today's video. We are super thankful for our video sponsors and we do have to say the Fleetwood partnership is one we're particularly excited about because we have owned a Fleetwood now for over four years and we're consistently impressed with the quality of our RV and we think that you would be pretty impressed with the Fleetwood quality as well. There'll be a link in the description below where you can learn more about Fleetwood and all of their product offerings back to the video. So we're going to step inside of the Fortis now. Now this one is a 33 foot. So this has an extra five feet of length from the one we just took a look at. So let's take a look at what that extra five feet really gets you in a class A motorhome and some of the options that this one has on it as well. So we're in this Fleetwood Fortis. Now, this is a similar setup to the flare with the way that the counter is set up. 
So you have your actual propane stove, your oven, and then this one has a microwave and a convection oven option in the microwave as well. You can see up here, the storage is a little bit bigger cabinets than in the other one. Again, we're dealing with a little bit more length on this particular rig. So an actual glass tile backsplash that is in this area. This is a similar setup in floor plan to the flare we just looked at where you have your fold down booth dinette and then you have your sofa here. Now on this, since this folds down, you can use this for sleeping. This also has a jackknife sofa. So this works basically kind of like a futon would work where you can fold that out and have this for sleeping here or have it folded up. <laughs> This is entertaining. Every single time. <laughs> Have it folded up when it's not in use. And then you've got your overhead bunk here. So really, you could easily do one, two people here, potentially two here, depending upon how big they are. One to two here. And then we still have the back bedroom to look at. So if you have smallish adults, or kids, you could really easily do two here, two here, two here. So now we've got six plus mom and dad or grandma and grandpa in the back. So more sleeping space in this particular model with that jackknife sofa that you're adding in. So depending upon what your travel style is, if you're gonna be doing more family travel versus just travel on your own, this might be a model to consider stepping up to if you want that extra sleeping space option. So let's talk a little bit about this cockpit area. So you've got a workstation here that actually folds up and out. So creates more of kind of a desk feel up here. Then you can see on the outside that you actually have those cameras integrated into the mirrors like that we were talking about. So you still have those side view cameras, but they're actually part of the mirror system instead of being mounted onto the body itself. Up above, you've got your overhead storage here. Now, since this is connected to the bed, this storage is going to drop down with the bed when you go to lower that bed if you've got people sleeping up there, which means it's still accessible, which is nice because some of the bunks, it just creates difficulty accessing those overhead storage areas versus this particular setup where it comes down with the bunk. So a couple of extra things that this model has from a tech perspective is the stereo is integrated with Apple CarPlay, which is nice. You also have a dash cam that not only is recording that footage constantly just for your protection and others, but also has a sensor that's built in it. If you're getting too close to the car in front of you, it will give an audible alarm to just let you know that you've kind of hit that threshold of being a little too close to that vehicle in front of you. With a little bit of extra length, one of the things that you get with this is actually a bath and a half. So you have a half bathroom up here with your toilet sink and a ton of storage, and then you have a full bathroom at the very back. Now moving back towards the bedroom, you've got your fridge and freezer here. So this is your 12 volt fridge and freezer. Now, one thing that you get with this extra length too, is an actual stackable washer dryer. Oh, so you've got your washer dryer set up here that's stackable and that's something that you get with the extra length that you're not gonna find with the particular flare model. So coming back into the actual bedroom area, you've got a king size bed, which is super nice to have. Now, this is where that extra length gets you some of those extra things. So in addition to the king size bed, that is not the convertible style bed, but it just stays flat all of the time. You have lots of extra wardrobe space that you get here. This walkway just feels huge. And part of that is because you have this wardrobe on this slide, that is slid out this way. And then the bed, which is on this slide and is slid out this way. So lots of space. And then you come back into the back and you have this full bathroom back here. So you have your shower on the one side, you have your toilet on the other side, sink in the center and tons of storage all around these areas here. This is what that extra length really gets you is two bathrooms, 
versus one bathroom. And then of course you've got your stackable washer dryer that's in this particular unit too. So even though this is a little bit of a step up in price point, it is a huge step up when it comes to some extra features and having just that little bit of extra length really gets you a ton. So let's talk a little bit about the outside features of the Fortis. So you've got your nice big screen TV that is out here to be able to just have those movie nights with the grandkids or whatever that you want to do outside when it comes to TV. And then you've got a nice big storage area. Now this does pass through on this all the way to the other side on the top. So if you have kayaks or paddle boards or things of that nature that you don't want to have to try to deflate or fold down, you can pass those through this particular storage bay all the way to the other side. So you've got your propane tank here. One way to kind of know when you're looking at an RV is any door, if it does not have a lock, it's pretty much going to be your propane because you actually cannot lock that compartment for safety reasons. So that's your propane compartment right there. And then you've got more storage here that goes on a pass through. So nice pass through, which is again, nice for those paddle boards, things you just don't want to have to compress down if you can avoid it. Nice big all the way through storage bay here as well. So adding this little bit of extra length, stepping up just a little bit really does get you a ton more with the extra storage on the outside, the bath and a half, just a lot of different features in taking just that little bit of step up. Hello. Hello, Jackie. And then you come so thanks so much for watching this video about the Fleetwood Flare. So thanks so much for watching this video comparing the Fleetwood Flare to the Fleetwood Fortis. You'll have to let us know in the description below which one was your particular favorite and why. We're gonna put more videos with tours to Fleetwood products right up here. We'll have some videos of fun places to go and see traveling with your RV over here. Make sure you hit that subscribe button right down here. And if we don't see you on the road or at the campground, we'll see you in the next video.